Uh, this hand is garbage. We have two creatures and a bunch of lands. One more. This hand is quite a bit better. We'll keep this. We'll have to put a card back. I'm leaning towards putting back Chupacabra. Uh, we like having quite a few lands. And the Grolf's Messenger could be very useful as well. So we could play Gilded Goose first, or we could play Colony Garden. If we play the Gilded Goose, we have access to Eldritch Evolution turn two, but evolving a one drop isn't that interesting. I'm just going to play the Colony Garden Pass. Um, if the opponent is up on uh, modern knowledge, they might realize what this means. But uh, they're presenting us with uh, quite a confusing conundrum as well. First turn, basic island and a delver of secrets. That's not something you see very often in modern. So I think I want to play a tap land um, and Gilded Goose. So I'll probably start with Verdant Catacombs so I can go get Overgrown Tomb with it. I'll just play Gilded Goose and pass back. So one thing that <clears throat> we could have done, and that might have been right and proper, was to put Gilded Goose down turn one, and then play Garolf's Messenger turn two, and then turn three we could evolve the Messenger into Yawgmoth. Okay, they're attacking with the Delver of Secrets. We should be able to block this with the Goose, no problem. They only have blue mana up, they've played a land, so we don't have to worry about uh, Lava Dart or something like it. We'll go get Overgrown Tomb and put it into play tapped. And we find Cord of Calling. So Cord would be one, two, three, four, five. We'll get us a two drop. So maybe we'll play the Garal's Messenger and pass. Probably play Tomb of Yawgmoth so we can get the black mana from the colony garden. They do have two mana up, so they could absolutely have counterspell here. But we rather they counter a Garal's Messenger rather than an Eldritch Evolution, that's for sure. Okay, Delver flips, and they show us a Spell Pierce. Counter target, non-creature spell, unless this controller pays two. So that's good to know that they have. Um, we might be able to play around that. We get Yawgmoth off the top. And this says non-creature spell. They cannot counter Yawgmoth with that. So let's play Overgrown Tomb untapped. And play Yawgmoth. And we win. Opponent a little bit premature on their concession there, but our board was quite oppressive. So if they did not have um, a ready answer for Yawgmoth there, then we were going to win on our next turn. Uh, we would not have won on that turn, I don't think, but uh, we were very close. So let's see here. How are we going to play against the uh, Mono Blue Delver of Secrets deck? Veil vale of Summer is coming in for sure. Otherwise, I can't really be sure of what the opponent is trying to do. So I think I'll just play with the two Veil vale of Summers and go from there. We'll take out the Phyrexian Revoker and an Eldric Evolution. Eldric Evolution is um, very... Uh, risky against any blue deck so I might even want to take out another evolution and bring in a separate card like a thought seize or something just because of how bad evolution is versus blue decks it does get better with veil of summer though so we do have that um, let's bring in the thought seize so we can potentially thought seize one of their counter spells 
Um, generally, I want to bring in Thoughtseize for a combo deck, but because of uh, just really not knowing what the opponent is doing besides the fact that they're on blue, I know I want to take Eldritch Evolution out, so bringing in Thoughtseize I think is better than one of our evolutions. We'll submit here, and we got the glitch. So what do we have here? Um, we have no one drops, but we have Strangle Geist into Geralt's Messenger with Court of Calling. Hand is not good. Uh, I think this is a bad hand keep though. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit six Relic of Progenitus from the opponent. That does stop our combo. Ooh, Wall of Roots, fantastic. Um, I think I'll just play Overgrown Tomb Tapped. We could also just play Verdant Catacombs so that we can fetch the Overgrown Tomb. I think that gives us more options. Although it does mean that we might be taking pain later, I don't really feel that that's a big issue here. So we'll go get Overgrown Tomb. And then we'll play Stranger Root Geist. We could also go for the Wall of Roots here. Um, if we get a Young Wolf, for example, off the top, I would be more into that. But I think that Wall of Roots will be fine next turn where we can two spell. So maybe we'll just play Twilight Mire Stranger Root Geist. If they have a counter spell, they should use it here. Okay, they have a remand. So Strangle Root Geist back to hand and pass the turn. Next turn, we're looking at two spelling with Wall of Roots into Geist. And if they counter the Wall of Roots, then we have Bird's Paradise to back it up. Okay, another remand. And an opt from the opponent. Okay, opponent is at four mana now, so they have access to Cryptic Command. So we're gonna to wanna to be very careful about how we play our spells. We're gonna start with a Wall of Roots. Okay, that result. Um, we could try Stranger Root Geist here, and then we would have um, one, two, three, four, five. We would be able to Court of Calling for a two. But if we don't, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we could, again, Court of Calling for a two. Hmm. Let's try Geist, see what they have here. Okay, so they are going to counter this. Is this Cryptic Command? It is. Uh, counter draw, okay, so Strangle Root Geist is gone. And that will nullify our Court of Calling here. So we do have enough mana here to cast Scavenging Ooze while they're tapped out. And um, we can even use the Wall of Roots if we wish to allow the Scavenging Ooze to eat a guard out of their graveyard. Um, if we don't have to, we aren't going to. We would rather keep the counters on Wall of Roots for now. Okay, they have four mana up, so we're not going to do anything basically at all here. Uh, I'm just wondering if I should attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can definitely attack. Okay, 
Okay, they'll take two. And we have Court of Calling ready to go at end step. Okay, so they do flip the Insectile Liberation and reveal Entrancing Melody. Entrancing Melody, very interesting card. It allows the opponent to steal our cards. So if they want to cast that, we're going to respond by Court of Calling for Yawgmoth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we don't need to use the uh, Wall of Roots here. So X should be four. Very good. Let's go get Yawgmoth. They'll probably counter this. Yes, indeed. So this is counter draw a card. So we'll be able to get Yawgmoth on our turn. Um, I think... No, they haven't shown us the spell pierce yet. That was last game, right? So we don't know that they have anything to counter our Court of Calling. Could we play Garolf's Messenger and Court of Calling? Is uh, one of the questions I'm wanting to answer. Or could we Court of Calling and hold up two mana for the um, Spell Pierce? We have Wall of Roots, which is basically even mana. And then if we spent three mana, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't think we would have... No, we would have... No, because the Geralt's Messenger comes into play tapped, we wouldn't have mana for Yawgmoth. Okay, Wall of Roots comes into play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we don't need to use the Wall of Roots um, minus ability in order to cast the Court of Calling. And then we'll be able to hold up the two mana just in case they have Spell Pierce. X is four. Okay, let's go. Okay, we'll get Yawgmoth. Very good. Um, so at this point, we could draw some cards and kill the Insectile Aberration but I don't think we're under any pressure right now. Let's just go ahead and pass the turn and wait to see what happens. We could kill their Insectile Aberration during combat by sacrificing a Bird of Paradise and a Wall of Roots. But that would cut down on our mana um, I would like to keep my life total healthy, though. The Yawgmoth does require a bit of life. Oh, Eternal Witness off the top. Okay. We're going to keep our mana with the Wall of Roots and sacrifice the Scavenging Ooze. Ooh, and we have Veil of Summer available because of Wall of Roots. Entrancing Melody. Okay, we'll Veil of Summer that. Our creatures gain Hexproof from Blue. They've tapped all their mana, and we're ready to go. Um, they do have Relic of Progenitus, but we have plenty of creatures in our graveyard, so we win right here. Um, we are actually missing something, now that I uh, realize this. Uh, we have less life than our opponent, so our Garof's Messenger won't win. But maybe our opponent doesn't know that. When do I sleep? Um, when everyone else works. We'll start with Garolf's Messenger. OK, 
Okay, they activate the relic, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and get rid of hmm, Court of Calling or Veil of Summer. Let's get rid of uh, Bird of Paradise. Okay, we'll play Strangle Root Geist next. Okay, so um, we've already used our Wall of Roots this turn. However, we could Eternal Witness get the Court of Calling back. And then on the opponent's upkeep, we could try and do something. The problem is they would have access to the Relic of Progenitus again. So maybe we just uh, Eternal Witness back the Veil of Summer and uh, get ready to win on the following turn. Or we could just start drawing cards and see if we can find a way to win through that. We're very, very close, and they have almost no way of interacting with us. Um, I just want to see if Court of Calling would be lethal. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it would. So we probably shouldn't attack. We should just combo. All right, so uh, let's see here. We want to sacrifice Grolf's Messenger. Okay, so choose up to one target. We want no targets for this one, and we'll sacrifice Grof's Messenger. Always yield to Undying. Always yield to that. But we don't want to yield to the other one. Okay, so now we're going to start our combo. Put a counter on Grof's Messenger, sacrifice Geist. Blooming Marsh, no good. Put a counter on Strong Root Geist, Sacrifice Messenger. Find Court of Calling, fantastic. They're tapped out. So the only card they could have would be Force of Negation. Um, could we play around Force of Negation? I don't think we can, because if we turn a Witness back, the Veil of Summer, um, we don't have mana for the, the Wall of Roots have already been used. So we won't have mana for the Veil of Summer. We have to just Cord Raw and hope that it works. One, two, three, four, five. X is two. Okay, it worked. Go get Cutthroat. Now we combo. Put a counter on Gross Messenger, sacrifice Geist, we win the match. Interesting hand here. Um, we have access to fast mana and Strangaroo Geist, but the hand doesn't go anywhere. I'm leaning towards mulliganing this. This hand is a little bit better. It's at least keepable. I think we throw back one of the Twilight Myers. The Dryad Arbor is a little bit risky. I prefer to have that to fetch towards, so maybe we should have put the Dryad Arbor back, but it could be quite nice to have the Arbor when we have uh, Yogmoth. So we're going to play Nurturing Peatland to start, and then we'll pass. Uh, looking at Scavenging Ooze, turn two. Hollowed Fountain tapped. Okay, that could mean a lot of different things. Uh, we'll play the Twilight Mire. And Scavenging Ooze, and pass. Oh my, opponent kept a one land hand here. Did they mulligan? They did mulligan as well. Okay, so they kept a one land hand. Ooh, Eldrick Evolution. That's nice. So I think we probably attack with Scooze, play the Arbor, and then pass. We could... Hmm. I'm just thinking about, like, I want to get Yogmoth out next turn. So that's why I'm thinking about playing the Arbor this turn. But if we play the Yogmoth's, or sorry, the Overgrown Tomb, we could evolve the Ooze into something. I don't think we want to evolve the Ooze yet until we know what we want to look for. So let's just attack and play the Dryad Arbor and pass.
Okay, so opponent should at this point know what we are playing. The cards that we revealed, the Twilight Mire, the Dryad Arbor, um, these will tell the opponent if they are savvy that we are playing the Yawgmoth combo. Unfortunately, we don't know at all what our opponent is playing. So we're going to bring in Veil of Summer because we saw Hollowed Fountain. So we figure they probably have counter spells. And for that reason, we are also taking out Eldric Evolution. Um, I'm going to put in Thought Seize and take out Revoker. And we're going to try this. Bringing in Thought Seize because I don't know what the opponent is playing. So Thought Seize will give us that information. Um, this hand is not great. We don't have any early plays besides the Thought Seize. The Court of Calling will rot in our hand for ages, and the Yawgmoths aren't going to come out until like turn four anyway. So despite having lands and spells, this is a mulligan. Okay, this isn't much better. Looks like our opponent has kept on seven. Um, we have Dryad Arbor and a pair of Court of Callings. Yeah, this is really not good. Let's mulligan again. I think a random five is going to be better than this six. This is better. Okay. So we are going to have to figure out which cards to put back. Um, Court of Calling for one. And then do we put back Garolf's Messenger... Or Colony Garden? Do we put back Urborg? I think we put back Court of Calling and just keep what we have here. We could put back Colony Garden, but then we wouldn't have guaranteed mana for the Strangaroop Geist. Um, I would love to keep the cord though, because we basically have the combo ready to go. So maybe we... But if we put back Urbor, we don't have the mana to cast Garolf's Messenger. Maybe we put back Verdant Catacombs and hope to draw another land. Okay, we got the other land we were looking for. Fantastic. So we'll start with Colony Garden. That'll give us the green mana we require for Strangaroot Geist next turn, and it also ramps us for the Court of Calling. Okay, opponent is passing with two mana up. We find Blooming Marsh. We'll play that and cast Strangaroot Geist. What kind of counter spells are you playing, opponent? Answer is none. Attack with Strangaroot Geist. No path to exile, and that's it. Interesting. Okay, so they put the Temple Garden to play untapped and have Ice Fang Coatl. And now they have Skyclave Apparition, and that's going to be able to take our Strangaroot Geist away from us. So I think opponent is playing... Um, what is that deck called? Soul Tender or something? They uh, blink their creatures over and over, basically, and gain advantage through that. Skyclave Apparition is, uh, oof, really, really bad for that for us. So we're just going to play Urborg, play Garolf's Messenger, and pass, and hope that we can untap and play a Chord of Calling later. Okay, another Skyclave Apparition. So that's going to take our Garolf's Messenger off the board. And we find Thought Seize a little bit late. So let's see here. How much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Quarter Calling for two is no good. Let's start with a Thought Seize. So they have Force of Negation and Sword of Fire and Ice. The Sword of Fire and Ice here is ready to go and is going to provide them with quite a bit of value. 
Um, so if we allow them to keep the Sword of Fire and Ice, we're going to die in a couple of turns. We leave them with the Force of Negation, however, our Court of Calling is not going to resolve. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're close to Court of Calling for um, Yawgmoth, but we're not there yet. We're going to get rid of the Sword of Fire and Ice because we need time. And Gilded Goose can actually give us a little bit of time. Um, it can gain us three life a turn, where they're attacking for five. And they don't have Death Touch yet on the Coatl, but they are close. One more permanent, and they have Death Touch. They could even play a Coatl if they draw one. Okay, no, they have it through the planes, which we knew about. Uh, no blocks. We'll take five. We want that extra. And we should actually turn off the auto yields here so that we can crack the food. We don't need the Gilded Goose for mana necessarily because of the Court of Calling. So we're going to use the food here instead. Just to try and buff up our life total just a little bit. We got Forest off the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so we can go get Yawgmoth. Um, we know they have Force of Negation in hand and Field of Ruin, so they're not ready to cast it. So let's go ahead and Cord. And go get Yawgmoth. Okay, so we could kill one of the apparitions, which would give us a 3-3 token. We could easily kill a Coatl, but then we wouldn't be able to kill one of the apparitions. I think that we probably just pass the turn here. And wait to see what happens. Okay, there's the Field of Ruin we knew about. So they have Force of Negation and an Unknown. They're looking to give the Hex Drinker protection from everything. We're going to have to let that happen, unfortunately. And they'll just attack with a 6-6, six, six, so we'll take 6 go to six. They could have Force of Negation up here. Um, they have two cards in hand, one unknown. We get Strangaroot Geist. Very, very strong. Let's cast the Geist to start. See what happens. It works. Okay. So let's put a counter on Skyclave Apparition, sacrificing Strangaroot Geist. Okay, that works. Let's put a counter onto Strangaroot Geist, sacrificing our plant. Okay, let's put a counter onto Skyclave Apparition, sacrificing Strangaroot Geist. Find Young Wolf. Okay, we're almost there. Still missing something. Okay, so I think from this point, we're probably just supposed to see what we can do, if we can possibly combo. We're at three life, and the Hex Drinker is going to kill us, so we just combo and see if we can find the last piece. Put a counter on Geist, sacrifice Wolf. We have one more draw after this one. Put a counter on Wolf, Sacrifice Geist. This is our last draw. Find Gilded Goose. 
So unfortunately, we just lose here. Um, we could get our tokens from the Skyclave Apparitions, but the Hex Drinker is going to kill us with his protection from everything. Okay, we have a little bit uh, better idea of what our opponent is doing now. So we can put the Eldritch Evolutions back in the deck. Uh, bring in Fatal Push, take out Thoughtseize. We could bring in Assassin's Trophy. Take out... Hmm. Probably take out Veil of Summer and something. All right, I'm going to be back in a minute. All right, made it back in plenty of time. So we have one card to take out. Maybe we'll just take out one Eldrick Evolution. The, uh, the deck is playing blue. We've seen the Force of Negation, so Eldrick Evolution is still a liability. And we got the Glitch. So we got Birds of Paradise. Oh, this hand is good. This hand is good. We'll keep this. We're ready. Groff's Messenger, turn two. Eldritch Evolution, turn three. Okay, opponent also keeping on seven. Um, because of the Twilight Myers, we can just go get basic forest here. Play the bird pass. Next turn, Groff's Messenger. Now we got another evolution. Okay, Twilight Mire. Make black, black. Hey there, handsome. I see you there in the past. Hello from the future. Okay, so they have two mana up. So using the evolution is a little bit risky. But Strangaroo Geist is a great draw. We have one, two, three, four mana. Um, let's start with a Geist. Uh, attack for five. And then maybe play Scavenging Ooze. We don't need to necessarily worry about Sweepers. We have Undying Creatures. And we'll just pass here. Opponent needs some interaction. They could have Skyclave Apparition here. Nope, they don't have the mana for it. However, they do have mana for counter magic. So I'm thinking I might just attack and say go. We could also Eldritch Evolution. Ooh, no, they played a thing. Opponent played a thing. I think we win, chat. They have colorless mana open. They could have um, Force of Negation for the Eldritch Evolution, but we're only going to lose an Undying on the Groff's Messenger if we go for it. And if we get it, then we win. So do they have Force of Negation? They do. Okay. So we lose the Eldritch Evolution, but our Groff's Messenger come back. And they're at six life now, and we have an oppressive board. Um, the question is, do we want to play Gilded Goose or leave up Scavenging Ooze trigger? We're going to leave up Scavenging Ooze. Okay. So they have all their mana untapped. Um, they could have Secure the Wastes which would be absolutely the worst for us. So maybe we just attack with Groff's Messenger? No, that's no good. If we attack with everything and they have the um, Secure the Waste, we're in a pretty bad position. 
Maybe we just go for the evolution pre-combat and see what happens. They could... No, they don't have um, Corruptic Command. They don't have enough blue. Let's evolve the Strangaroo Geist and see what happens. Okay, so they have collected company in response. And they didn't hit anything, so they concede. And this hand looks great, let's keep. One thing we do have to be aware of is Twilight Mire is sometimes a colorless land. That's the reason why I play three Twilight Mire, while most people play four. Because a double or triple Twilight Mire hand gets you no mana. So, we have Verdant Catacombs, which can go get us basic forest, and Twilight Mire will give us black for the Groff's Messenger. So we're going to do that. Play Gilded Goose, and pass. Um, the reason we're playing Gilded Goose over some other options are uh, basically Renin 6 and Lava Dart. So these cards are not as prevalent as they have been in the past. I could absolutely understand moving back towards Noble Hierarch. Okay, so Pendlehaven into Llanowar Elf. So we believe that's elves, right? Elves won't really have any way to interact with us. So we can just throw down Groff's Messenger this turn. And then next turn evolve. Ooh, but Wall of Roots. Okay, so we have to take just a moment here to think what Wall of Roots changes. So we can play the Wall of Roots without spending the mana from Gilded Goose. That gives us access to two more mana, which doesn't do anything for us this turn. However, it gives us access to plenty more mana next turn. So we'll have three, four, five mana, which is unfortunately not enough for Rolf's Messenger and Evolution. I'd like to evolve into Yawgmoth as soon as possible, especially if they're playing Elves, so we can clear their board. So I'm thinking I'll play Twilight Mire Groff's Messenger, so I can evolve the Messenger into Yawgmoth. But generally, you want to play Wall of Roots when you find it. Alright, we're going to go for the Groff's Messenger here. And then we'll pass the turn to our opponent. Okay, opponent is playing a bunch of elves here. They're going to have Heritage Druid mana, but it looks like they have nothing to do with it. Mm, lucky us, lucky us. Okay, we get Chupacabra off the top, but I think what we probably want to do is just evolve the Groff's Messenger, go get Yawgmoth, and start taking things off of their board. Ah, 
Um, we probably want to attack first though, right? They're not actually going to block Garolf's messenger with two of their elves, and if they did, we're fine with that. So let's attack. Okay, so we evolve. Uh, let's see here, green, green. Evolve the messenger. It comes back. Go get Yogmoth. Kill their heritage druid. Uh, there's going to be a couple more steps before we get that heritage druid off the board. First off, we're going to want to reset Grolf's Messenger. Okay, and now we will kill Heritage Druid. Okay, pass the turn back. So this is a pretty good position for us. They do have a turn here for Collected Company, but our next turn should be Gas. Okay, they have a Zuri here, so they're actually pretty close to doing awesome things themselves. But we do have more life than the opponent, so I think we just win. Blooming Marsh, okay. So we play Twilight Mire. And Court of Calling is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, yeah. Okay, so playing against elves, definitely bring in Plague Engineer. Uh, what else do we want versus Elves? Fatal Push. And maybe Assassin's Trophy. Um, the Phyrexian Revoker actually seems quite good. We can take out Eternal Witness. Take out one of our Messengers. And... Scavenging Ooze. Pretty satisfied with this. Let's submit. This hand is fine. We have Fatal Push for one of their first threats. Phyrexian Revoker turns off some of their more uh, pressing matters. The Arch Druid, for example. Court of Calling can go get us Yogmoth. The hand is a little bit slow, but I think we keep it still. We can start with turn one Gilded Goose and move on from there. Um, we don't have access to Ooh, okay, Heritage Druid, so they're going to be starting real quick. Maybe we should just push that. Another Gilded Goose, huh? Alright, um, I'm going to play Vern Catacombs. We're going to pass. And when they play uh, their 2-drop that makes an Elf, we'll kill Heritage Druid in response. Oh, an Elvish Mystic instead. Okay. Get okay, Overgrown Tomb, Fatal Push, the higher the Heritage Druid. That's our one push. But I think it was pretty important there. It slowed the opponent down quite a bit. Alright, so if we want to play both of the geese. We cannot play the Dryad Arbor. Um, Phyrexian Revoker would be a play if these were the same elves, but they're different. They have different names. 
So I think we play the two geese and pass. So do we play Overgrown Tomb or Nurturing Peatland? Peatland is going to do the most damage over time, so we're going to play the Overgrown Tomb. And pass here. So next turn we'll have access to Cord for two, and then the turn after that we'll be able to get Yawgmoth. So we'll probably just uh, try and sit on our heels here for as long as possible. Opponent's Collected Company could be dangerous. Oh, they have a Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Ooze does break up our combo, but we have Phyrexian Revoker to say no. Okay, another Forest. So, um, if we play Phyrexian Revoker, we're not going to have enough mana to make food, so we can play our Dryad Arbor this turn. And we'll say Phyrexian Revoker on Scavenging Ooze. And we'll pass. We have a little bit of defense. Another Collected Company. So they have a Zuri here, which is a problem. Dwenin's Elite. But we should be able to Court of Calling for Yawgmoth and start taking some of their things off the board. Another land. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exactly enough for Yogmoth. We could Yogmoth get the Heritage Druid off the board. I think that whatever happens, we're going to be better off just getting Yogmoth onto the board right now. Okay, and now we can start killing some of their things. So what's important to kill? The Heritage Druid is what gets the mana, so we have to kill that. We get Wall of Roots. The question is, do we want to continue trying to kill their things? We could kill like their Llanowar Elves here and really cut them off of mana so that their Azuri isn't going to work. The problem is that also cuts us, us off of mana. But with the Eldritch Evolution off the top, I think we might be okay. We do also have access to food to gain a little bit of life. And they're not going to have mana enough for Azuri here. So let's see here, we play Nurturing Peatland, play Wall of Roots, evolve Wall of Roots into what? Chupacabra maybe? Kill the Azuri, kill a bunch of their other things? If we can just kill all their... Ooh, wait, we could go get, I guess some... Um, what's name? I guess Plague Engineer is not all that great here. Uh, they don't have any X1s. So while Plague Engineer would normally be very good versus Elves, I don't think it's going to do us all that much good here. Okay, here's another Paragon. Not too worried about that, per se. More so worried about this. Okay, so we're going to take three here. They have no mana available. So we can block one without any worry of our Yawgmoth dying. And we get Court of Calling. Okay.
go get forest here, play wall of roots. And then we evolve the wall of roots, but what do we get? Or we could cord one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could cord for three. Could cord for three, go get Just checking my deck list here. Cord for three. The only three we have is Grolf's Messenger and Eternal Witness. And Plague Engineer. But Plague Engineer is not going to do too much on this board. Could evolve and go get a zombie. And then try and just like wait a turn. What if we wait a turn and then evolve? So we'll have blocks ready to go. Problem is our life total is quite low here. And if they attack with everything, block, 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 take three, four, five, take a lot of damage here. So I really think we need to move to combo. So maybe we just go get um, maybe we just go get Strangle Root Geist with Court of Calling, end of opponent's turn, and then go for the win the turn after that with Eldritch Evolution. See how many life we can possibly uh, hold. One of the other things we could do is try and put a bunch of counters on their creatures with, with Yogmoth, and then go get Plague Engineer so that their creatures die. A lot of things to consider that turn. As you can see through my clock versus my opponents, we have a lot of things to consider. Okay, here comes the attack. So we're gonna block and then Court of Calling. So that's three, four, five, six, seven puts us to one, which means we can no longer do Yogmoth fun. We're gonna to need to gain life through food before we can do Yogmoth stuff. We could also go get um, the Plague Engineer at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six, which will shrink their creatures. I think that's a pretty good play actually. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. This is our block. X is three. Perfect. Plague Engineer. Elf. We'll take way less damage this way. Only taking one, two, three, four, putting us to four, which means Yogmoth will be ready to go. They will be able to, I mean, they can't regenerate anything actually. They could have increased the power. No, they couldn't have. Scavenging was off, okay. Another land. So what can we do here? We have two evolutions. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can do both evolutions, but that won't get us to combo. Um, alternatively, we're looking at killing as many of their creatures as possible, which is good. And we also have life to gain.
So let's evolve the Wall of Roots. Go get Chupacabra. Chupacabra kills this big old elf over here. Play a land. We have three life to gain. And I think we can just pass here. Okay, so they're passing back. We can gain a little bit of life here. Ooh, and we get Court of Calling. Excellent. So, what can we do here? Um, once again, we're going to have problems comboing, because we don't have any Undying creatures on the board here. But we might be able to put enough minus counters on their creatures that we can proliferate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, if we let's see here, how are we going to run this? I think we start with an evolution. The problem with evolving a chupacabra is that we don't really get any true value out of it. Um, I wonder, can we Court of Calling and then evolve a Young Wolf? One, two, three, four. We're missing one mana to do that. Uh, no, we're not, because we can use the uh, the creatures here for the Court. One, two, three, four. Go get Young Wolf. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We can kill this guy. Okay, we get another evolution. So we're really close now. We just have to survive another turn and we should be golden. Um, let's just pass. All we need to do is survive one turn here. Oh, another Scavenging Ooze. Okay, that is a problem. We'll have to kill that. Scavenging Ooze will stop our combo. Okay, let's gain some life. Back up to eight. And what do we draw here? Another Blooming Marsh, that's uh, no good. So. What is that elf? The Growth Chamber Guardian, the Crab Elf. Okay, we have eight minutes and a half left to figure out how to combo out here. The scavenging ooze is a problem, but we could get rid of it fairly easily if we start sacrificing our creatures. Let's start by evolving the chupacabra. Okay, 
Okay, we're going to go get... Rolf's Messenger. Okay, so if we Use the Plague Engineer to put a minus one, minus one counter on Scavenging Ooze, and then use the Garolf's Messenger to put a minus one, minus one counter on the Scavenging Ooze, and then Eldric Evolution, we're not going to have enough. It feels like we're still not quite there. The problem is that Scavenging Ooze, now that they've untapped, has access to a ton of food. But they're still not attacking, so that's good for us. Let's draw a card. Another land, okay. And a young wolf, okay. We'll play the young wolf. And then we'll evolve it. They're going to use the scavenging ooze to eat the wolf in response. They have one mana left. We'll go get Zulaport Cutthroat. I feel like I have no idea what modern is about anymore. Uh, it's pretty confusing what's going on here. We're really close here, but the scavenging ooze is keeping us from comboing. But as long as the opponent holds back, then we're doing okay. Just keep on, don't attack, keep your elves back, Tap all your lands. Okay, perfect. So they have two lands left. What do we draw? We got another Yog Moth. Okay. We're going to pass back. Um, the Scavenging Ooze is totally screwing us up here. Okay, so Scooze is eating our wall of roots. Okay. Just don't use that Scooze again. We're looking for one more undying creature. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. We're still looking for quite a few things here. Okay, just a land. We'll pass. Another Growth Chamber Guardian. So they are starting to go wide here. They might actually still be able to take this game from us. Scavenging Ooze has just been doing a ton of work. This is their second Scavenging Ooze too. We managed to get rid of the first one. But the second one is tripping us up. So we're going to have to go for it this turn. And we just get Urborg off the top. Come on, deck. All right, so we're going to have to do something here. Unfortunately, they have three mana up. So Yawgmoth is really not looking too good.
Is this where they alpha strike? Okay, we get another turn. What do we draw? Wall of Roots. Okay. Our opponent only has two mana left. Okay, so what can we do here? Um, let's see here. Wall of Roots could kill the Elf Warrior. We could also put a counter back onto the Young Wolf here. Draw a card. Get Bird of Paradise. We'll play that. Ah, Peatland. Okay, well, at least we can redraw with that. Groff's Messenger, okay. They have two lands open, and we have three Undying Creatures. Does that mean that we win here? I don't think so. Because we sacrifice one Undying Creature, they eat it. We sacrifice another Undying Creature, they eat it. And we're still no closer to winning. So unfortunately, I don't think we have it here. Okay, now we do. We got it. They tapped a mana. They have one mana left. We won. Alright, so uh, I guess we'll be getting a new follow in a little bit. Um, so we got a ton of lands here. We got a young wolf. I, I really don't like this hand though. We have no mana ramp. And we have nothing to do on turn 2 and realistically on turn 3. So we're going to mull this. We have to mull this. We have no lands. And we will keep this. Hey, thanks bud. So we have to put two cards back here. Um, we're going to put back Urborg for sure, and probably the Cutthroat, maybe the Revoker. Hmm. Curious here, like this is such an awkward hand. Revoker could be useful in the right situation, and we can like find the Cutthroat later. Cutthroat really isn't very uh, a very good creature unless we're comboing, so I don't necessarily want to be having that in hand. I would rather just cord for it later. Talaria West. Okay, that could mean a few things. Revoker is good, yeah, if we know their hand. Very true. Too bad we're not playing Thoughtseize. Okay, get Blooming Marsh off the top. 
So playing Phyrexian Revoker here doesn't seem very good. You think it means prime time? So what could we name with Phyrexian Revoker if they're playing prime time? On the snake? So like the um, the Ninja Turtle? Uh, Sakura Tribelder? EE or Blast Zone. Unfortunately, we cannot name Blast Zone. Um, engineered Explosives would be fine. I hate playing out this card right now, but we have Court of Calling in hand, so we kind of have to. Alright, we're going to name Engineered Explosives. Not a thing that we want to be doing, putting Phyrexia and Revoker out on turn 2. We would much rather be playing Wall of Roots, but uh, it is what it is. Here's an Explore. So it looks like uh, Handsome was right, as usual. There's Simic Growth Chamber. I wanted to take a closer look at that forest. That forest looked really good. Ravenous Chupacabra. Alright, so we can Court of Calling X is 1, go get Young Wolf. Or we could go get uh, Bird, so that we can actually play our Yawgmoth. Oh, okay, good to know. Elder is played in Scapeshift Titan, which doesn't play Talaria West. And Scout is played in Amulet. Things have changed quite a bit since I was familiar with the, uh, the Titan decks. There's quite a few options on which way you can go now. 100% of the time, I'm right 30% of the time. Opponent's taken a think here on what to do with their turn. Another explore is the answer. And there's a Valakut. So they're probably looking to do some gross things next turn. And we are lagging here. I mean, like, we are stumbling pretty hard. Okay, Sun Homes is a very classic kind of list here. Gonna play the Druid. So we're in a Court of Calling. X is one. We'll go get uh, Bird of Paradise so that we can play our Yawgmoth. But I mean, realistically, we're, we're doing pretty bad here. All right, we got the Yawgmoth in play. Next turn, we can play Young Wolf. If they don't have us dead here, we might actually be able to get back into it. We have a lot of draws off the top. Especially where we have more life than the opponent right now. But opponent has all the cards and all the manas, so we have to just wait and see what they're going to do. And it looks like prime time. I don't think they have... Oh no, they're getting Dryad here. Is that going to let them prime time? No, it's going to let them Valakut. So they can Valakut and get rid of our Yawgmoth. It's almost the same thing. Okay, so yep. 
Thran down. Um, we could sacrifice our creatures here in order to draw some cards. Um, I want to keep the bird for the mana, but I don't mind losing the Revoker. So we'll put a minus one counter on the Dryad, sack the Revoker. Draw Twilight Mire, and then let the Valakut happen. There's a Grazer. Let's them play another land. And that's going to kill our Bird of Paradise here. And we're, we're dead. We're going to concede here. I guess I guess we, we have the Chupacabra for the Dryad. So maybe we shouldn't concede just yet. Let's see what we draw, what they draw. They have to pay mana for the Summoner's Pack this turn coming up. So, yeah. We're going to... Uh, we're going to wait before we concede here. <laughs> Too bad they have the double green. So they will be able to pay for the pact. We're actually pretty close to just uh, getting them with Summoner's Pact. Oh, here's an Amulet of Vigor. We're 3-0 on match 4, so uh, we're, we're going to try our best. Okay, it looks like opponent is passing the turn back to us. We get Strangaroot Geist. So we have most of the pieces we need. We just need a Yawgmoth now. Opponent has four cards in hand and all the lands. Let's see what they got. I think we could safely just pass until end step here. We will want to crack our Verdant Catacombs, probably get a Dryad Arbor. And we'll let ju just let them do their thing. Their deck can't bolt us without the Dryad, that's true. Their lands are a lot worse without Dryad in play. Mm. But prime time is a problem. Fortunately, the Sun Home is in play and tapped. Oh no, that's a double strike one. So which one is the one that gives them haste? They could still go get that one and untap it through Amulet of Vigor. Which means we're going to be taking a ton of damage this turn. There it is. Slayer Stronghold. So if they do not kill us, can we still win? Yeah, I think it is probably game. And I thought I was yielding until end step. But it's still asking me to do things. Oh, they can bounce the sun home. Yield until end step seems to be broken. Okay, I thought that was one of the things they were looking to fix. But, I mean, if it continuously asks me for uh, my input rather than just skipping my turn and the opponent's turn and every turn up until then, this is still better.
Okay, here's a Transmute, Hilaria West. Go get Summoner's Pact. And they play the Summoner's Pact immediately. Go get Dryad, play Dryad. Do they have a win now? Vesuva, Valakut. Okay, and that's a win. So we'll concede here. All right, so what do we have against this deck? We have Damping Sphere. Um, we could bring in Assassin's Trophy. I like Ashiok, actually. Thank you, Ashiok. We agree. Uh, don't mind Thoughtseize, actually. You think uh, Rex Sage? And in that case, we can also bring in Brontodon, because that will get rid of their uh, their amulet. Yep, and the Dryad. Uh, we can take out Phyrexian Revoker. We can take out Scavenging Ooze. Uh, we can take out one of our Groff's Messengers. We can take out Eternal Witness. And then we need to take out one more card if we want to keep the Thought Seize. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's good to know. Juka Wall says that the opponent is uh, quite savvy with Amulet. So the question is, is Thoughtseize better than our combo pieces? Because we could take out one of our Young Wolf for a Thoughtseize. Looks like an old school list. Yeah, it does. Opponent used the Delta line instead of the Beta line. Well, I guess in a sense their deck is quite similar to ours in that way. Ooh, I like Assassin's Trophy, actually. Being able to Assassin's Trophy one of their Karoo lands seems quite strong. So let's take out the Thought Seas, and we'll take out, I think, probably a Young Wolf. And we'll go with this. No glitch. Nice. We'll take the play. Okay, this hand is fine. We have Young Wolf, Geist, and Wall of Roots. Plenty of mana, we just need to draw well. Might be able to hammer them. We're not playing hammer time though, handsome. Yep. Yeah. I was hoping that we would have a turn, that they would play the Titan, do their thing, and then pass, so we could have one more draw step. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's the trick, right? You just gotta know how to get there. Same thing with this deck. So we're gonna start with Young Wolf. And then we'll pass. Depending on what we draw next turn, we're probably looking at actually playing the Strangle Root Geist so we can present a clock. Get some damage on the board. Just another land? Unfortunate. Alright, so... Yeah, no kidding, eh? We have the nurtur Nurturing Peat Land to get another draw. But that land off the top was uh, not what we were looking for. Okay, here comes Amulet. Oh, no, Engineered Explosives on one, okay. That's not too scary. It only hits the young wolf. And they play Sunhome. Curious about the lands here. Ooh, Eldritch Evolution! What do we do here? We can evolve the Strangaroot Geist, go get Yogmoth. And while we don't exactly combo immediately, we have um, basically infinite draws. Ok, 
Okay, so we evolve the Strangle Root Geist. It comes back with more power so we can attack with it. And we go get Yawgmoth. Okay, so now we're going to go to attacks. And we'll just uh, pass here. We have no more mana to do anything. But we do have basically infinite draws. Slayer's Stronghold from the opponent. Now, Engineered Explosives is going to interrupt us a little bit. But when we play the Wall of Roots, we'll be able to reset. Another Young Wolf. Okay. Okay, so opponent is holding on the wall of roots here. Reminder about the flavor text. So we could uh, proliferate our dudes. They're going to kill the young wolf here. That's fine. Don't mind that at all. Oh, and they're going to dismember the yog moth. That is a problem. Um, unfortunately, there's not much we can do about that, so we miss out on the unlimited draws. That dismember was quite good from the opponent. We do have a very aggressive board, though. Yeah, they did. Very, very well. Well, weren't you saying that the opponent was good? You are correct. We're going to play our young wolf. We have lethal on board now. Um, we'll play Verdant Catacombs and pass the turn. Okay, Arboreal Grazer, um, that is a blocker. So they, uh, they don't have, hmm, what are, we, what are we gonna do here? We're not able to kill them this turn. Uh, we have the Peatland to draw a card. I think we'll just fetch and see what we draw. Thin the deck a little bit. Uh, we could go get Dryad Arbor here as an extra attacker. Ooh, Garof's Messenger. That's the perfect draw. Perfect draw. All right, let's attack. One, two, three, four, puts them to two, Groff's Messenger ends it. Whew! Okay. That was a very awkward keep, but we managed to get there. I don't think I want to change anything about the deck, so we're just going to resubmit. A Juka Wall. Santa Maria says uh, thank you for the kind words. I think we keep this. We have the Ashiok, turn two. So we're going to keep it on the back of that. We do have two Twilight Myers. Fortunately, we have a Blooming Marsh. So we will be able to make colored mana. Oh, they're starting with an Amulet of Vigor. So that is problematic.
we won from the hammer beats. Every once in a while, we win from attacking. It doesn't happen a lot, but every once in a while. Okay, uh, we have nothing to do here. We're going to just hit six, let the opponent do their thing. Oh, and they have the Dryad immediately. That is, uh, whew. All right, let's get this Ashiok onto the board. Okay, and we're going to leave it at 5 so that the Dryad will take multiple turns to kill it. Dryad has to attack Ashiok successfully three times to get it off the board. Oh, here's an Azusa. So they're going to be able to play a ton of lands this turn. Um, we can actually just hit 6 here. We have no mana, no plays. Uh, damping Sphere off the top would be nice. Jeez, how many land drops do they get? Like four land drops a turn? Ooh, a Karn, the great creator, was not expecting that. Attacking the Ashiok makes sense. We will have to put up a defense for the Ashiok this turn. The Azusa will be able to finish it off if we uh, if we don't. But we have the Gilded Goose here, so Gilded Goose can block Azusa. They go get Liquid Metal Coating. That turns things into artifacts, and then they cannot be used because of Karn. So they could take one of our lands, like this Blooming Marsh, and say we can no longer use it. Too bad, because we just drew Evolution. Alright, so I think we just play Overgrown Tomb, and then play Cutthroat. We could play Gilded Goose to give us more mana. I don't mind that either. We could play Gilded Goose, and then we could play Zil Zulaport Cutthroat, actually. Okay, we'll just pass here. We have the Gilded Goose to block the Azusa, so we can keep the Ashiok around for one more turn. We are still quite a few steps away from winning the game, however. We have no Undying Creatures. We do have Evolution and Yawgmoth, so if we could survive for two more turns, we might be able to do something. Okay, so they're both attacking Ashiok, as we expected. Go to block, so Gilded Goose will block Azusa. We get to keep all of our critters this way. Keep everything. Okay, here's an Ancient Stirrings. One of the old powerhouse cards of modern. We've seen that for ages in Tron. And it's quite good in this deck too, where most of the time you're looking for lands or maybe an Amulet of Vigor.
what could they be looking at here? Must have the packed transmorph land. Mm, makes sense. Okay, they reveal Valakut, and they have the Dryad. So once they've get uh, six lands into play, Valakut is going to be killing all of our stuff. Um, they have Karn here to go get one more item. So that if they go get a uh, Pithing Needle, oh, that's, oh, they're looking to kill our land, right? Neat. And we get Thrashing Bronodon. Unfortunately, we don't have the mana right now to activate it. We could also evolve um, one of our Gilded Geese into, um, not unless we evolve into Chub. Okay, so we could evolve the Cutthroat into Chupacabra and kill the Dryad, or we could evolve a Gilded Goose into a Rex Sage and kill the Amulet of Vigor. Those are our options. Ping Karn first. Oh yeah, we can attack with the Zulaport Cutthroat. So we decided to go with the Chupacabra, getting rid of the Dryad there. The Valakut is a huge problem. Um, we will have to deal with Amulet at a later time. Unfortunately, the Karn is going to be able to get rid of our uh, mana producer here. So we're not really going to be able to produce any more mana reliably unless we draw another land. One of the problems with Twilight Mire, as we were talking about before, if you don't have another land in play, you can't really do anything with it. Okay, with the Azusa here, they're going to be able to play and replay the Simic Growth Chamber ad nauseum. So that will give them access to six mana for their Titan. Um, Titan cannot search their library though. So maybe they'll go for a Dryad. Oh, Oblivion Stone. That's a problem. That's going to wipe our board. So yeah, Oblivion Stone is basically GG. Especially when we don't have the mana for Thrashing Brantodon. But I mean, they have the mana for the Oblivion Stone immediately. So there's really nothing we can do. Yeah, they wouldn't want to activate the stone now. They would lose too much themselves. They're going to want to start uh, putting fate counters on their permanents. So do we put the Thrashing Brontodon into play now? Probably, right? Because what else can we do?
I would much prefer to have mana ready to go with the Brontodon. But this forces their hand on the Oblivion Stone. Um, they can wait until their turn, though, which means they'll be able to uh, keep one thing around and then Liquid Metal Coating our Peatland. Yeah, that was my, uh, my thinking. Force their hand now so that they can only keep one thing through the Oblivion Stone. They decided they want to keep Amulet of Vigor. Makes sense. Oblivion Stone's going to take Ashiok off the board here. They can go ahead and minus two Karn. Oh, no, they want to get rid of my land. That makes sense. I expect them to Oblivion Stone probably during their second main phase. They might even do it now after they get all the mana they want through the Azusa so that they can get the Ashiok off the board and then put the prime time onto the board when Ashiok is no longer stopping them from searching. Uh, we can actually just hit six here. We have no action. More than likely. The Ashiok, the early Ashiok was quite good at uh, stalling the opponent. Unfortunately, we just weren't able to follow it up. Oh yeah, the Karn was fantastic from the opponent. Okay, here's the Summoner's Pact. Prime time, here it comes. Alright, um, we have two lands and no mana. We have Yogmoth in hand, so like, this game is over. Uh, one land hand. It's no good. We have to mull. Ah, now this is a hand we can keep. I think we put back Zulaport Cutthroat. Otherwise, we have everything we need in our hand. We can evolve the Strangaroot Geist into a zombie, and then Yogmoth will seal the game. Unfortunately, we do have double draw land, so we are going to be taking quite a bit of pain from our lands, which means the zombie combo won't necessarily work. Okay, so Mishra's Bauble, Thicket, Giver of Ruins. Is this the Heliod combo deck? wonder if he knows what NR10 means. Alright. Uh, so let's cast the Strangaroo Geist. We'll use the bird for one of the manas. No rush. Go ahead and block. I dare you. So we're looking at a turn four win. But the peatlands are definitely in the way of that. It's going to be a little bit awkward. Um, if we just had regular lands, we would have no problem. The peatlands... Oh my, I did not expect this block. That's fine. Very unexpected though. I figured for sure they would let that through. Uh, so that insulates their life total, which is going to be very good for them actually means that we might have to wait an extra turn in order to combo. We don't actually have any plays here. We can hit six. Oh, opponent is stuck at one land. Okay, we get Chord of Calling. Uh, we can Chord X as one, or we can evolve um, something. If we evolve the Strangaroo Geist, we actually lose it, which is unfortunate. We could Court of Calling for a Dryad Arbor, which I don't mind. That lets us play Yogmoth next turn. And if the opponent is stuck on one land, then we're doing okay.
There's their land. It's been quite a while since I've cored a calling for a Dryad Arbor. It doesn't happen very often. Oh, here's a Devoted Druid. Okay. So we're going to have to kill that. X is zero. Let's go get Dryad Arbor. And we find Swamp. Okay. So we have plenty of mana. How are we going to do this? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think we play, th play Yawgmoth. We probably want to attack first. Yeah, so we attack first, and then we play Yawgmoth and kill Dr Devoted Druid. We can attack with Dryad Arbor. We have enough lands now. No blocks. And we're going to draw a bunch of cards while we're doing this. So first thing, put a counter on Strangaroot Geist, sacrificing Dryad Arbor. Draw a card. Ooh, Phyrexian Revoker is pretty good versus Devoted Druid. Okay, second thing, put a counter on Devoted Druid, sacrifice Strangaroot Geist. Draw a card. Okay, well, we're going to do it again. Put a counter on Strangaroot Geist. Sacrifice Bird. Draw a card. Heliod Spike Feeder. So you think it's the full thing, eh? Because, yeah, Devoted Druid would play Luris if it was just Devoted Druid. Put a counter on Devoted Druid. Sacrifice Strangaroot Geist. Look at all those cards we drew. So yeah, they should, exactly. They put a counter on the Devoted Druid, so we do not draw that final card. Good on opponent there. That was the proper play. We'll just hit two here. We do have action because of Yawgmoth, but we would rather keep the Stronger Root Geist on the board if possible. Next turn, we're looking at playing Wall of Roots, uh, evolving into a zombie and winning. Did we play a land? Good question. I'm pretty sure we did. I thought we played the swamp there. Yeah, because, um, hmm, did we though? Yeah, turn four, played swamp. All right, so we just got to wait a second here as the opponent decides what they're going to do on their turn four. It is an awkward position, to be sure, but they have six cards in hand, so they could absolutely have answers. Um, a Path to Exile, for example, would remove Yawgmoth from the table. Okay, our turn. They get to draw an extra card. Look for that path. Oh, they have something. Oh, they're going to Elam Diary's Call. I think we win. Because they didn't hold up path here. Pretty sure we have it. Okay, so let's just make sure. We have one, two, three, four mana. We play Wall of Roots. Then we have three mana. We evolve Wall of Roots into Zombie. And then we do the Zombie combo. The thing is... 
We're going to have to tap two meat nurturing peatlands, which puts us to eight. So we have to attack first. And the Vernon Catacombs will put us to seven, but the attack puts the opponent to five. So we will have enough to finish them off. Okay, go get basic forest, wall of roots. Evolve the roots. Go get zombie, win the game. Geralt's messenger, GG. Okay, so, target, Geist, Sack, Messenger. Target, Geist, Sacrifice. Sorry, target, Zombie, Sacrifice, Geist. Yeah, we did that right, okay. Target, Geist, Sacrifice, Zombie. Um, yeah, there we go. It is a little bit repetitive, but I do like um, sounding it out when I'm doing the combo. It would be an easy combo to screw up, so I just like to be careful there, take the time, even though it sounds kind of silly. So, uh, let's see here. We're playing against Devoted Druid. Fatal Push seems very good. Ashiok means they can't search. We could bring in Assassin's Trophy as another way to answer the Druid. And I think that's everything we want to bring in. Um, we can bring out Scavenging Ooze. We want to keep the Revoker, take out the Witness, and one of the Zombies. I think I'm fine with this. And we crashed. Okay, this hand is this hand is okay. Um I think I would probably keep it on the play, but on the draw, I think it's too slow. If we were on the play, our turn three Ravenous Chupacabra would be able to get rid of their turn two devoted druid. But if we just let them play a devoted druid, we're dead. So I'm gonna mulligan this. Um, we're going to keep this one. We have some early turn action. And hopefully we draw into what we're looking for. We'll just get rid of the cutthroat here. Not a great hand, though. Twilight Mire. Alright, so we're going to start Forest Bird of Paradise Pass. And if they have Devoted Druid on turn two, we're in quite a bit of trouble. Oh, no, they have Oriok Champion instead. Okay. So that does make it difficult for us to combo. Uh, I think I'll probably just play Colony Garden, Wall of Roots, Young Wolf here. Although, I could just play an untapped land and get both the Young Wolves into play. I'd like to get the Colony Garden into play while we can. Opponent's going to gain plenty of life. So, we will need... Um, We'll need the Mercenary in order to get through a champion. And if they have two champions, that's a big problem. I don't know that we can actually combo through two champions. Yep, that's the one. Zulaport Cutthroat. We need Zulaport Cutthroat and Zombie. If we have Zulaport Cutthroat and two Zombies, we can get through Oriok Champion. Or rather, two Oriok Champions. Yeah, Zulaport plus Zombie is the way to get through one champion 
And Zulaport, two zombies, gets through multiple champions. Ooh, Ashiok. Don't mind if I do. Do we have black mana? We do, because of the Twilight Mire. All right. Do you still have a couple of ferrets? Unfortunately not. Um, all of my ferrets have passed. But uh, I will say that they were the greatest pets that I've ever had. Yeah, me too. Okay, we're going to leave the Ashiok in play. No reason to activate it. We'll just keep it nice and healthy so the opponent cannot search. We'll play our young wolf and pass the turn. So there's very little value in activating. You can combo off any number of champions if you have a cutthroat. So we need to have the zombie in order to combo with the cutthroat because the Oriok champion would be gaining back that one life every time that the... Um... Actually, hold on a second. Let me think about that. Because of the way the triggers go onto the stack, it might actually be different. This is interesting. I'm going to have to uh, think about that. If we leave all the Oriok champion triggers on the stack, so if we comboed out on the opponent's turn so that our triggers went onto the uh, onto the stack above the Oriok triggers, we might actually be able to do everything while the Oriok is just sitting there doing nothing. That's that's fascinating. I'm going to have to think about that more. But, uh, hmm. Okay, Gilded Goose. Uh, that's no good. We will absolutely play it, though. Always heard they were messy pets. Um, well, I mean, I, I really put a ferret on the same level as a cat or a dog, right? So your cat or your dog can be messy pets. I, I, I think that it's very similar to that, honestly. Okay, here's the Devoted Druid. So they'll have access to Unbound Mana next turn. They do definitely have a, uh, a unique smell about them, but you could say, again, the same thing about most animals. The thing I most liked most about ferrets was uh, their curiosity. Um, they acted very much like a kitten and a puppy for their entire lives. Okay, so let's get a good draw off the top, shall we? Ugh. Birds of Paradise off the top. We can't get anything going here. Alright, we're just going to have to pass the turn and hope they don't have it. So they cannot Elamdari's Call for it, but they do have Unbound Mana. Wow. I mean, this is nothing. Um, we can always yield to the untap here. So you have all the mana opponent. What can you do with it, though? What can you actually do? All we need is Yogmoth, and we're good to go. Any search spell, we're good to go. We can start killing their creatures. Okay, so they're making mana. Once they present um, something to do with the mana, we will concede. 
We're not looking to run out their clock here. We just want to see that they have it. Fortunately, the clicks here are going very quick. Yeah, it has to be Ballista. No, this is Finale of Devastation. They cannot search their library. But I think their creatures all get plus 20, plus 0 in haste. So even though they don't search, they should still have the win here. Yep, they have the win. They have, uh, actually, we can block a bunch of these dudes. Let's see how many we can block. Because they don't have trample. So the young wolves definitely get in front. Uh, Gilded Goose. I think we keep the wall of roots and block with everything else. And then we'll make a food. Eat the food, why not? Okay, we got our two wolves back. Still looking for Yawgmoth here. Ooh, so yeah, the Vizier of Remedies means that Yawgmoth can't kill any of their creatures. We do find the Court of Calling. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can get Yawgmoth, but because of the Vizier of Remedies, we can't kill any of their creatures. Um, we could go get Chupacabra, kill the Devoted Druid, but they have Luris to bring it back. Ashiok exiles it. Yes! Yes! Good one, Handsome. Love it. Okay, we're doing that. Okay, X is four. We get to keep one young wolf back as a blocker. I would love to get Yogg, but the Vizier of Remedies says that I cannot kill any of their creatures with Yogmoth, and I can't win either. So I could get Yogg and hold for a turn. That would mean that they would have access to Devoted, Devoted Druid and Unbound Mana, but they wouldn't be able to search. So maybe Yogg is still the best choice, and just hope that I don't die because then our next turn would be way better. We could potentially win. Okay, they have Horizon Canopy, draw a card, looking for that Walking Ballista. Um, we do. Well, yes and no. We have as many draws as we has life. Because it will cost one life every time we draw. Once we hit Zulaport Cutthroat, um, we have unbound draws. And then once we get our zombies onto the board, we're good to go.
Okay, opponent has three cards in hand and as much mana as they can do anything with. been keeping my Ashiok healthy at 5 loyalty. Um, if the opponent ever had anything in their graveyard that they could use with Lurus, then we would minus the Ashiok. But until that point, I don't really see much point in uh, milling the opponent for a few cards. They're going to have multiple copies of whatever they're looking for. Can chunk 16 cards from their library. Yep, yep, we could try and get those walking ballistas out of the deck. But they're going to start attacking us. And that could be dangerous. Okay, no attacks this turn. They want to risk any of their cards. Makes sense. And we get to untap. We get to untap. This is really, really good for us. Okay, we get another Yawgmoth off the top. Um, that could be good if they had a path. So first thing we need to do is get this counter off of the young wolf. So we're gonna add a mana with wall of roots, target young wolf, sacrifice wall of roots. Thank you, handsome. Okay, we find Dryad Arbor. That is another creature, but uh, that's not what we need right now. So we're gonna start comboing and we're gonna look for a couple pieces. Okay, put a counter on this one, sacrifice this one. Oh, I should uh, go ahead and yield to that one. We're going to auto yield to the Oriok Champion for now. Okay, and yeah, the Yawgmoth, because we're doing it on our turn, we're not going to be able to beat the Oriok Champion this way. But we're just looking for our combo here. Uh, target this one, sack this one. Okay, we find Strangle Root Geist. Uh, that's no good. We're looking for a Zombie and Cutthroat. Target this one, sack this one. Young Wolf, no good. Target this one, sack this one. Assassin's Trophy. Okay, unfortunately does not kill Oriok Champion, but does kill Devoted Druid. So that's a good card. Let's keep comboing. Um, target this one, sack this one. Court of Calling. Okay, so Court of Calling goes and gets one of the cards that we need. We can play Dryad Arbor to help cast it. Um... One, two, three, four, five. Oh, cancel that. We don't need three, we need two. Okay, X is two. Court of Calling. Unfortunately, we're missing out on black mana. So we're going to need um, evolution to get our zombie. Let's get cutthroat. Oh, actually, no, we have Twilight Mire. We're fine. We should win right here. Okay. Target this one, sack this one. I do not yield to the last Yawgmoth Thran Physician trigger. Um, there might be things that we want to do in response to that. Okay, we get Fatal Push. Uh, not what we were looking for here. Target this one, sack this one. 
we're going to want to find the final piece before we pass the turn. We're still missing one thing. Or are, yeah. So are we missing the one thing? If we do it on their turn, is the cutthroat enough to just win with this? We cannot draw 60 cards. Oh my gosh, you're right. So are we just dead because of the champion here? Because we have to draw cards in order to do damage. We can't just stop drawing cards. Even if we get the zombie, we don't have enough... Oh, maybe we do. All right, let's keep going. Target this, sack this. Court of Calling. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can get the zombie now. Okay, pass to their upkeep. Uh, turn off all the auto yields. Okay. Put a counter on Young Wolf. Sacrifice Zombie. Uh, looks like, yeah, the Oriok Champion triggers are still going to be above the Cutthroat triggers. So, unfortunately, uh, that is not going to stop. That's too bad. Uh, 32. 32 cards left in the library. I think that's just enough. Ordering the Undying wrong. How, how am I ordering the Undying wrong? I'm not given an opportunity to do anything on the order of the Undying. Put a counter on this. Sacrifice this. Oh, I get it. If I put the cutthroat on first, you're right. Okay, cool. Put a counter on Young Wolf, Sacrifice Messenger. And then we put the Groff's Messenger trigger underneath the Zulaport cutthroat. Okay, um, need to turn off auto yields here. Ah, uh, yeah, you still have to wait for the minus one, minus one. Yeah, okay.
wait till we have the second zombie. We, we pretty much have it, right? We can Court of Calling for the second zombie. Oh, we were netting one. Ouch. Thought we were netting more than that. Well, at least we're doing more damage now, but I don't I still don't know if we're going to have enough cards in our library to finish this off. Slayer Fall saying we don't have enough. We have 21 cards left, 20 cards left, sorry. Every iteration does two damage. So yeah, we just don't have enough. But how many are we missing? Because we could stop at the end and sacrifice the rest of our creatures and then just Zula port. Oh, opponent's doing stuff. Ooh, nice emote. The Poggers Pog. A little bit, yep. Uh, it looks to be that way. We're going to go ahead and uh, yield to their devoted druid so that we don't have to use that uh, time up. Okay, we have 14 cards left in our library. This is quite click intensive because the opponent has at so many life. Yep. Thank you.
uh, target this, sack this. We have nine cards left in our library. <laughs> we are comboing here. We got the combo going. Opponent doesn't want to concede. They have a ton of life. We only have a few cards left in the deck. So we're having a great old time here. Uh, we are 3-1. And if we can find the line here, then uh, we go 4-1. Okay, we're almost out of cards. We still have four minutes left on the clock. Target this, sack this. Okay, target this, sacrifice this. We're almost out of cards. Okay, uh, we can do this two more times. Target this, sack this. Turn off auto yield in a moment. We have one more to go, and then we turn off auto yield. Okay, last time. Target this, sack this. Last one with the auto yields on. And then, yeah, we're going to start sacrificing and not drawing. Oh, Veil of Summer. Does that change anything? They have pro black. Target opponent loses two life. Okay. So now one, two, three, four, five, six. We should still win. Uh, let's see here. Turn off auto yields. Hold control. Oops, cancel that. Ashiok carried. Ashiok was a key part of this whole thing. Last one.
I think we did it. I know, right? They just need anything. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right. That ending sequence is definitely going in the deck tech.